Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now the biggest takeaway this year and this week has been the fall that we've seen in the banking stocks. So that's our topic for today. What is ailing the banking stocks? The bank Nifty is down almost 7% this year and the PSU bank index is in fact down almost 15%. We have two experts who've been tracking the space very closely. Vishal Goel who is the head of research and the bank's analyst at UBS Securities joins in. We also have Krishna Nasv, the lead analyst at BFSI at HDFC Securities who's with us. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for being with us on the show. Vishal, I want to start with you first. I mean, I was just talking about how, you know, the stocks have fallen so much this year. And this is the very same sector that had a great performance last year. So, uh, you know, just to start with that, what exactly is ailing the banking stocks now? So, I think uh, what we saw last year was a lot of tailwinds which came together for the banking sector. Overall, we saw credit cost being historic low. Also, loan growth surprised positively driven by working capital demand. So we saw loan growth of anywhere between 15 to 18% for bulk of the year. Also, thanks to the interest rate cycle and the EBLR led repricing, we also saw sharper repricing uh, and therefore a quicker transmission to margins. So almost all the three vectors were working for the banking, uh, you know, earnings and, and returns. That clearly helped uh, last year. And as we enter this year, uh, at least one out of the two definitely would fade in, uh, which is the margins. Loan growth also looks like the 18% should be the near term peak. Asset quality, I think overall we are still okay, uh, but I think the the lowest point on credit cost, I think, is already behind us. So generally, we'll, we'll move towards more moderate or modest uh, uh, metrics this year. Okay, so you're saying loan growth of 18% is what we should expect this year and the margins will moderate. No. Is that what you said? No, 18% is already behind. The peak is already behind. The I peak meant. is behind us. Okay, so yeah, now what like would it be? What would it be in FY24? Yes, so FY24, we feel it'll be closer to nominal GDP growth which is 11 to 12 percent okay. for us, slightly higher than nominal GDP. Okay, so loan growth of 18 percent, which was the peak, uh, you know, in the preceding year, will now perhaps slow down to just about double yeah. digits, right? Uh, we have Krishnan ASV who's also joining into the conversation, so let's ask him. Uh, Krishnan, uh, I think the margin problem is something that experts have spoken about and perhaps that's one of the reasons why the stocks have corrected as well. But you tell us, if you had to name the top two or three reasons why banking stocks are under pressure and what's your own estimate of how much loan growth could slow down to? Yeah, hi, many thanks, uh, Sonia. So, very clearly, uh, I think we're consistent with what uh, Vishal is saying, uh, which is that the best of growth, uh, best of margins, and best of asset quality is probably behind us. Uh, we, we sense that uh, uh, also, I think valuations are probably adjusting to new normal as far as you know, terminal policy rates are concerned in India. So earlier, if you thought that the last of the rate hike is, you know, done by the Reserve Bank of India, uh, we might now be adjusting to about 50 basis points higher as far as the terminal repo rate is concerned. So closer to 7% instead of 6.5%. So and that essentially means there is still a little bit of headwind. So the peak margin, peak growth, peak asset quality or best of asset quality is now behind. Uh, on that, we would be fairly consistent with what Vishal has said as well, yeah. Okay. Uh, Vishal, let's talk a little bit about this. What is the reason for which margins for banks have peaked? I mean, just a little more in detail to understand it. And what do you think the way forward is now with, you know, interest rates rising further, um, the loan growth perhaps slowing down, consumption demand has slowed down in a big way. What do you think all of this would do to the loan, uh, to the margins for banks? Sure. So, if we see what has been driving margins uh, and so quickly was the EBLR repricing. So RBI raised repo rates, uh, almost 40% of the book is linked to repo rate, roughly 30 to 40% for most banks. And that transmission actually is happening on a real time basis or with a one month kind of a lag. So bulk of that repricing would be done uh, by end of March. Uh, most of it is already behind in, in December. But the deposit rate hikes, which started only from September 
and we saw, I think, almost 150 to you know 175 basis point hike in deposit rates uh, in the last three to you know four months. The effect of that would start to appear on the spreads. And in fact, if you look at the December data from RBI, we are already seeing 30 to 40 bips compression in the incremental lending spreads. Uh, and also, in fact, in on the incremental lending yields, we are seeing a fatigue uh, in December in terms of, despite the, the repo rate hike, uh, banks have not been able to pass it on in form of higher lending rates on the new loans. So incremental spread compression, I think, would be would be the key reason for margin to start declining. Plus, also, you look at the free funds effect of CASA and net worth. Uh, when you see a sharp increase on the lending rate side, you get that 40% of the book accruing, you know, very high income. So the moment you see plateauing of lending yields, that free fund effects also starts to wear off. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Krishnan, come in on this. Uh, the fact that, you know, there's already a 30 to 40 basis point compression in the incremental lending spread, right? As uh, uh, Vishal was talking about. Do you think a lot of that is already priced into the stocks? Do you see incremental pressure both in terms of margins? That's one thing, of course, you spoke about. But on the stocks as well? Or is most of the bad news in the price? No, so... Uh... I think at least larger banks have corrected uh, fairly significantly now. I mean, at a, maybe say three months ago, we were struggling to find more than a double digit or maybe mid-teens upside in the larger banks. Now it seems we have reached a stage where, you know, you have comfortable, say, a 20% upside between 20 to 40% upside on large banks, depending on where our assumptions are. So I would sense that from, from a price correction perspective, we have probably seen, uh, we, we have seen valuations correct fairly significantly, fairly meaningfully. But as far as assumptions and our forecasts are concerned, I think those haven't yet moved, right? So I think uh, we are yet to come to terms with the new normal as far as loan growth and margins are concerned. I think most of us are working with margins which could be just about 50, 60 bips lower. Uh, and these are just, you know, first degree effects, right? I think there is still a lot more to go, including what Vishal just pointed out, which is, um, you know, banks having the pricing power but not being able to exercise it. I think that's usually the la usually the stage where you you don't want to start hurting asset quality, uh, and and so banks will be very skeptical. They may have the pricing power, but they know it kind of breaks the camel's back. You already have home loans at close to nine percent. So it starts becoming a lot more untenable thereafter. Mm -hmm. And hence, I believe that, you know, there is discretion being exercised in how much of the pricing power you'll actually exert. Yeah. Okay. I will, of course, ask you folks about whether this is a good time to be buying banks, but that happens in a bit. But I wanted your thoughts, Vishal, on this whole stock price movement, right? A lot of retail banks, whether it's Axis Bank, SBI, have lost about 10 to 15 percent of their value this year already. Um, are retails, bank stocks, have they already priced in this margin moderation? Have they priced in the NI growth deceleration? What's your best guess? Yeah. So I think large part of it is getting priced in. Now, when you look at, like the way at least we look at banks is on a business cycle framework. If I were to think about a 10 to 12 year business cycle uh, for Indian banks, we are probably in the stage two as, as we call it, which is basically a stable phase on asset quality. We have already passed the stage one, which is where you make most of the money on banks, where the write-offs, et cetera, have, you know, are significantly declining. We are in a phase where credit costs remains below average, and therefore bank stocks react to loan growth and margins much more than credit quality. Given that we are, we are in this phase, what we typically see is the valuations stay near averages and they will go up only if the loan growth goes up significantly higher than average. As we speak, Bank Nifty is trading slightly below its 10 year average and therefore there is you know, some more, I would say, margin of safety in that. If you were to take a medium term view on banks, I think it makes a lot of sense to still own banks because they are healthy, balance sheets are cleaner, system leverage is actually low and credit quality while it might inch up 
uh, I don't think it'll cross uh, historical averages in, in the near term. So it's a good, good time to be owning banks. In the very, very near term, which is three to six months, which is where I think all this margin and loan growth deceleration actually has to be digested. That is the only phase where it remains uncertain. Uh, and therefore, I would take a 12 to 18 month view and that's where we are constructive, you know, from, from that point of view. So 12 to 18 months view, you're saying uh, that uh, you are a bit cautious and the lo slightly medium to longer term. Okay, I, I got a little confused there. You said it makes sense to own banks for the medium term, but in the shorter which is, term? Which is 18 months. Which, which is 18, 18 months. months. Okay. Three to six months, three to six months, one needs to be slightly more cautious. Okay, so slightly more cautious. I mean, everyone's time frame of short and medium is different, right? So just want to get that correct. All right, the three to six months, there's some caution, but in the medium term, uh, you know, it's slightly longer term as well. It's a great place to be the Indian banking system. Got that. Let's do one thing. Let's take a short commercial break on smart money, but don't go anywhere. We'll also talk about the competition that banks are facing from fintech companies and whether that's a real threat to growth. More on that coming up in a bit.